So everyone has seen those really big, powerful servers. Big racks, lots of fans, massive rooms, full shebang. And a lot of those are either powered by Intel Xeon or AMD Epic, both of their enterprise level CPUs. Well, what if I told you Xeons were not only stupid powerful enterprise CPUs for servers, but were also very good gaming options for budget gaming. As industries and companies are upgrading from older Xeons and upgrading architectures, older Xeons need somewhere to go of course. And so what often happens is marketplaces will be flooded with workstations that have Xeons in them, as well as places like Wish and AliExpress will very often have lots of Xeons dumped onto them as well. But you might be asking, okay, sure, you get an Xeon, how are you going to power it? Well, the thing that a lot of older Intel Xeons is they actually share motherboards with modern processors. Like there are Xeons that are made for like LGA1156 or 1155, but there's also Core i3s, 5s and 7s made for those exact same sockets. But sure, there are some sockets that are a bit rarer, like LGA1366 or even LGA1356. What do you do then? Well, this is a motherboard I've shown on the channel before. Under there is an LGA1366 socket with an Xeon X5690. I did it on this video, but in that one I was more so talking about the age of the CPU still being very good. This one I want to talk more about how it's a good budget option. Obviously, CPUs are dumped onto the market, but the other thing is that motherboards tend to die a lot quicker than CPUs do. Like this company here, which I'm not even going to try and pronounce because I'm going to butcher it, what they do is go pull the chipsets and stuff like that and just make motherboards that work with the CPU but fit a basic thing and even include features that weren't on the original chipset. This is an X58 chipset with a USB 3.0 header. That's not normal. They've also got a lot of other benefits like even though they're usually a bit older, they've got things like massive core counts and have a lot of advantages. This isn't the setup I want to talk about today. I was on AliExpress a little while ago when I managed to get this X79 motherboard with a CPU and RAM for under $100. Obviously it's still these things like a power supply to work, SSD, that's only got the basics. But I also managed to get a CPU cooler for pretty cheap, which all in all was under 100 AUD for a CPU cooler, CPU, motherboard, and RAM. This is the motherboard I want to talk about today. Admittedly, I've already got it in a case. This is an MATX board, has a tower cooler, which should be more than adequate, 8 gigabytes of heat synced RAM. It's ECC, DDR3, 1333 megahertz, which doesn't sound great, but you'd be surprised, especially in dual channel, it's still for the most part up to the well, I guess that's what we're trying to prove at least. I've got the CPU mounted under there. I would pull it out, but quite frankly, the CPU mounting is a pain because what they will do, a lot of older or cheaper coolers will have clamps on either side that are made for AMD. And to do Intel compatibility, they'll just have these plastic rings in here. These plastic rings hook into the back of the motherboard. I don't even know if this one is... This one's even got a broken pin. It should be fine though. They hook into the back of the motherboard and just have push pins to hold them down. It is such a pain to get in there and deal with that because they break really easily because they're really cheaply made. But it's tucked under there. But I also want to talk about some of the other irregularities about this. The motherboard is a standard motherboard. It's pretty good. MATX, not exactly a looker, but she gets the job done. It's LGA1356, which is a pretty rare socket. X79, but the thing is about that is X79 didn't actually support NVMe. So you might be asking, how is there a slot there? Because I've tested, that's not just SATA, that does NVMe. Well, they've, what they've essentially done is they've essentially just got an adapter in there. And they've got reduced PCIe lanes, because these Xeons have massive PCIe support for servers and just converted it and essentially just used a converter for M.2 NVMe. This has a few caveats, like booting from Windows on that can be very iffy at best and not work at all at worst. But I've actually used this motherboard before in a few projects. I've, ha I've had some experience with it, I'll be honest. And so I'll tell you, if you're just using it for extra storage, it actually works like a normal NVMe drive would. It's pretty fast, it's pretty good, and more than adequate for what it needs to do. And so what I want to do is build this up a little bit, and let's do some testing on it. This is obviously an $100 motherboard CPU RAM and CPU cooler. I'm not going to count anything else in the price for the time being, because that's the main stuff I want to talk about, but I will make sure it's not a bottleneck. A SATA 3 SSD and I'm also going to chuck an RTX 3060 in here, which should be more than adequate for testing. And so I'm going to chuck it together enough and see that it posts. Here is the final system. RTX 3060 in there, CPU, 8 gigs of RAM. I know it's probably better to use more RAM, but this is what it came with in the bundle for the $100. And because it was bundled together, I'm going to keep it as, as it is. The power supply is not in there. I've put it outside because I put a 550 in there. Then I figured that might not be enough for the 3060. And I really didn't want to reroute all the cables. And so for the sake of testing, it's sitting just outside. And so 120 gigabyte SSD in there, 150 gigabyte hard drive. I'm going to test this, but 
I've just taken off my little lav mic because this this motherboard has an inbuilt speaker on it, like a beeper, which does a really cool thing when this motherboard turns on, which I really like. So assuming it, everything's fine, I'm gonna turn on the machine and show you that. It all works, blue LEDs are on. And then hopefully you heard that, it seems a little jingle, and it's running. And so let's get some benchmarking done. First, I ran a program called 3D Mark and ran the test called Time Spy, in which the results were pretty good overall for the CPU. And then I ran a CPU profile on the same app 3D Mark, which its lower thread ones weren't as great, which makes sense because it has high cores, high threads, low clock speeds. But moving on to the game, like usual, Doom ran easily, no stress, 230 FPS. Portal 2 ran at about 150 FPS, which is pretty good, and had little to no issues. The CPU wasn't even cranked the whole way. Assassin's Creed Unity ran at an average of about 50 to 60 FPS. The CPU was very clearly the bottleneck, but it ran pretty well overall. Especially for a chip its age, it ran very well. Also, because once I'm done with this, assuming it's good, this chip is going to a friend who just wants to play some Minecraft in Terraria, basically. I ran Terraria, no issues. I know the video recording has some artifacting and issues. That was not present on the monitor and I don't know why it's there, but that's purely on the video. And then with that, the system clearly works and it didn't do too badly either. It by no means ran exceptionally and it's by no means the most powerful CPU out there, but it's got six cores, 12 threads for under $100. This GPU was massively overkill for it. You could get away with something weaker. It's just overall ran quite well for a budget machine. Now there's gonna be a few things like, cause it's an older CPU and an Xeon, it'll have a few compatibility sh issues on occasion. But for the most part, if you're just doing some budget gaming, this is a great option. And it's got a few other benefits, like it keeps it out of e-waste as well. Cause a lot of these motherboards use recycled chipsets from things like servers or older consumer motherboards. They're just repurposed for the Xeons, as well as the Xeons are being saved from e-waste and trash. Overall, this is great for e-waste and recycling, and I actually really like that this is happening. I really like this. And so, while overall, Xeon CPUs are often big server processors, massive power, they can also be great budget machines. I've used them in multiple machines before. They're pretty good. They have a few downsides, like they don't have a great upgrade path, and you've got to go through sources like AliExpress to get them, but I think it's a really good option for budget gaming, anyway, as well as a great thing for e-waste. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. I'm a small tech creator and help out a ton as I'm trying to grow the channel. Comment down below if you've got any experience with like Xeons or AM or any of AMD's server chips or just enterprise level gear at all. What have you tinkered with before? Anyway, I hope to see you in the next one. Make sure to subscribe and bye bye